Hey guys, Ben Peterson here. Welcome to the Wood Gas Crash Course Video 2. In this one, we're going back in time. We're going back to the World War II days to look at World War II gasifiers, see how they saved a continent of Europe, and where they had some issues. They had, um, they had some work they need to be done in the modern times to kind of bring them up to date. Everything from grates and automation to solving bridging issues. They, um, they were a good, good solution back then, but they still had a little work to do. And uh, we tried to address a lot of that in this design here. So here's the quick history on wood gasification. There were some experiments going back to the 1600s, but in about 1859, I believe it was, Siemens patented a, a really stout commercial gas fire design, and that's what really kicked it off. By the turn of the 1900s, there were about 12,000 gas fires in, in North America. That They powered America through the 20s. Um, when the Depression came, wood gas fires were powering people all over the world. And then after that, it was World War II, where a million gasifiers strong were installed and, and operating all sorts of you know stuff, tanks, cars, factories, you name it. Anywhere they would, would have used petroleum, they had a, had a wood gasifier. Had a nice resurgence in the, in the 70s. And just here again recently with the uh, financial collapse in 2008, again, renewed interest. It, it's one of those cool technologies. It's, it's always there waiting for you. Um, but since the emergencies that people are responding to are, are several decades in between, the knowledge tends to be lost in between cycles. And so one of the things I wanted to do with this book was to, to put all that knowledge there so you didn't have to re repeat all of my um, struggling mistakes. So the World War II gas fires are known for saving the continent and doing lots of great stuff, but they also had some design issues as well. One of them is, you know, they bled off a lot of heat. And they had to do that because they were limited on space and weight and resources. But it's really a good idea, instead of bleeding that heat off, because those gas fires were as hot as a wood stove, we've actually insulated this in several different ways to capture that heat so we can convert the wood even faster. Another issue they had was bridging. The feedstock would get stuck in this area because the oils would release and then the wood would stick to it. So by running this hot, hot gas around the outside here, we're, we're melting off any oils and allowing everything to turn into charcoal so much sooner that it's actually able to convert into higher hydrogen and it really eliminates a lot of that bridging, that's fuel not falling down. Another thing it does is it allows us to tackle wetter fuels. Some of the World War II gasifiers were known for only being able to run wood dried, um, oven dried wood blocks and that's that's not known by everybody, but some of those designs were, were really made just for uh, oven and toasted wood. We ha added a visual monocle there so you can see inside, which is a, a nice feature. Kept a nice simplified filtration that's common. And we've installed an automation control box that controls our suction blower and our grate motor timing. Another challenge of the World War II designs was the grate would plug up with ash and there was a, a manual linkage bar you could run all the way up to the driver's area of the car but that could be 10 to 12 feet kind of a clunky solution so what we have is an automated grate that just gently sifts the ash through and makes everything flow really nice the world war ii designs some of them had like hand crank suction blowers <laughs> not not the ideal way to start with this nice robust uh 12 volt blower this thing has a lot of suction so it gets the machine started up very quick and of course the engine air mixing controls were pretty basic back then as well a lot of um, manual adjustments were made in the cab now we have some some really nice automation stuff and we're going to talk about that in video four of the wood gas crash course and of course when you add up all of those previous eight issues the ninth issue you get from a, a world war ii era gasifier is tar it's very possible that the oils you're breaking down don't get broken down fully. And so some of the oils get burnt up in the process and they're turned into tars. And those tars can, can foul your intake valves and your engine and, and whatnot. And so by addressing all of those problems in this design and going through and systematically eliminating them, it's made for a design that's very, very, very clean. So you can really appreciate that. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Crash Course. I hope you got a lot of good information out of it. In the next video, we're going to be building a unit. You get to follow along.
Make sure you get your copy of the Wood Gas Builders Bible, available at woodgasfireplans.com.